And in that, I want you, we're talking about our hearts. So, my text is check your dirt. Check your dirt. Check your soil of your heart. The parable of the sower, we know that there was a sower that went out to sow seed. There was four different types of grounds that that seed fell upon. And we can have these different types of soil in our hearts and in our lives. And one thing that captivated me, but I just want to read the scripture. So if you'll just be mindful of that. Mark's gospel, I'm using his gospel, Mark chapter 4. The Bible says in verse 3, Herc and behold, and this is Jesus speaking. There went out a sower to sow, and it came to pass that as he sowed, some fell by the wayside, and the fowls of the air came and devoured it up. That's your first ground. And some fell on the stony ground where it had not much earth, and immediately it sprang up, and because it had no depth of the earth, and when the sun was up, it was scorched, and because it had no root, it withered away. There's your second dirt. And some fell among the thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked it. And it yielded no fruit. There's your third dirt. Your last dirt. The other fell on good ground and did yield fruit that sprang up and increased and brought forth some 30, some 60, and some 100. And Jesus ended that. He said unto them, He that hath ears to hear, let him hear. Now, when the disciples got some time alone with Jesus, they began to ask Jesus, What did this parable mean? And so Jesus... And his kindness, because he wants everybody to understand the word of God, went on and to explain to his disciples that the wayside was the fowls that he used, but Jesus called them as Satan. He said, and these are they by the wayside where the word is sown, but when they have heard, Satan cometh immediately and taketh away the word that was sown in their hearts. The word is sown in your heart. That's why I said check your dirt. What's your soil level? Where are you at? Is your soil level at the wayside? Is it at the stony? Is it at the thorns? Or is it a good ground to receive the seed? The seed being the word of God. But the fowls, he said to the people, came and plucked it up. And as he described it to his disciples, he said Satan came and took it immediately from them. The stony one was the ones that received it with gladness, that joy, that hope of the word. But there was no root. And when affliction came, the Bible said that they were offended. They had no root in themselves and they endured but for a time. And afterward, the affliction or persecution arised for the word's sake. And immediately they were offended. Those were the ones in the stony ground. And then the thorns. The seed that fell among the thorns they were choked out. And Jesus described it as the cares of this world, the riches of this world, the lust of this world. It entered in and it choked the word out of them. The hope. Those addictions, the afflictions, those things, the lust of this flesh. It can be greater than what we allow our spiritual man to be. And this is all spiritual. Our spiritual man must be greater than than our fleshly man at all times. But it's going to depend upon the soil that is in our heart. What is our dirt temperature? What is our dirt level? What is in our dirt? Is it full of rocks? Is it full of thorns? Is it just dried up and by the wayside? Or is it a good soil that we're receiving the word tonight that we're not going to allow it to be choked out of us just because something happens? The Bible said that they became unfruitful. Jesus said, you know, I purge them, I break them off, that you can bear much more fruit because he wants us to be fruitful in our walk, our spiritual man. But then there's the good ground that all of us like to be in that classification, but I hate to say it, we're not always there because we allow the cares of this life and sometimes we are tempted. Amen? Amen. Am I the only one out here that's tempted at times? It doesn't have to be dirty things. It could just be laziness. Where's y'all's minds? I mean, it could be laziness and just not wanting to do or not giving my all. It doesn't necessarily have to be dirty things just when you're tempted. But there's a good ground. 
And these people, I thought about every one of them. Every one of them heard the same word. It was the same sower. It was the same seed. Everything was the same. It's just they received it differently. But there were some that received it. Their hearts were ready to receive what's, what was being preached to them. They received it and they brought forth fruit. They didn't allow the competition that is out there, the forces of this world and the enemy of their soul, to win. There is competition for you. The good against the evil. It is real. The good is saying you can do this. The evil saying, no, you can't, so just have this instead. He does that to each and every one of us. Sinner or saint. But what they heard, they received and they harvested. There was a difference there. Again, I said it was the same sower in the seed, but there was different results because of the hearer's heart. Or the hearer's soil that was in them. Their soil was either ready to receive the word or it had some things going on inside that they needed to get cleaned up so that they could receive the word fully. All of the hearts, everybody heard the word. Everybody tonight is hearing the word. But not everybody's going to receive it. Nope. I've been preaching how long? What's that timer say, Kathy? Six minutes. Six 40. minutes. That's it. Six minutes. You've only had six minutes out of your whole day right now. Hold on. Let me finish now. But what was accepted and not rejected is what's going to make the difference in every one of our lives. Are we willing to accept what God has for us? We're asking you to check your dirt. Check your dirt, man. That's your heart soil. Check your heart soil. But I like check your dirt just because I do. Even then and still today, some reject the gospel. But guess what? Others become disciples. Others still become the followers. So who's at the point tonight to accept and become a follower of Christ? And that's how the Lord was dealing with me about that was the difference between those that heard it and received it and then made fruit. They made fruit from it, that they could harvest it. Everything else has went to pot. Everything else in our life that we have tried, and even as Christians, I find myself... It's like we always go to the Lord last instead of first. Help us, Jesus. But have you tried Jesus? Are you in that storm tonight? Are you at that place tonight that everything else that you have done up to this point in your life has disappointed you, left you unsatisfied, without purpose, without fulfillment? It leaves you empty and disappointed. Then you need to try Jesus. You need to check your dirt. Allow that soil to be good to receive the hope of the word tonight. And try Jesus. Is your life going to be perfect? Absolutely not. All hell is going to break loose when you give your heart to God. But he'll defend you. He'll make a way out of no way. Do you think the children of Israel... They probably thought Moses lost his ever living mind. He brought him up to the Red Sea. They were done complaining anyway. You took us away from all our food and all that. They didn't realize you took them away from all their labor. And they're groaning and complaining in their bondage. But he brought them up to the Red Sea and Pharaoh was behind them. And they probably thought you lost your ever living mind. No way out. But can I tell you tonight, God made a way out of no way. He loved them so much, he didn't make them walk in the mud. It was a dry ground. Scientists or other people try to say different things. Well, it was only three feet of water. Well, I'm going to tell you what, that's an even better miracle because of all them horses and chariots and the men died. And three feet of water, that's a greater miracle than when the, roll, when the tide rolled back, amen. You think about the walls of water standing up, and if they died in three feet of water, or if the water came back on them, either way they died. Doesn't matter. But God made a way out of no way. And so many times we think, oh, God ain't going to deliver me. God ain't that. Have you asked him? 
I tell us one more time, don't blame God if you've never asked God to come into your life and get a part of the matter. Don't you blame God for where you're at because of your decisions. If you've never asked God to help you, don't you blame Him. And I'm telling us, try Jesus. Try Jesus. Check your dirt tonight. Are you ready to receive some hope? Are you ready to receive the Word and the seeds that God is sowing out tonight? That He's reaching out to you, letting you know you can have hope. Yeah, it's going to take some patience. It's going to take some work. You didn't get here overnight. You ain't going to get out overnight. Think about it. Every situation. What do you know? I tell you many times, don't allow grace get you all disrupted. Every one of us. Every one of us have a story. We have a past. But I'm so glad that God knows my future. That I've turned it over to Him. I don't no longer just live to myself. But I live to God and what He wants me to do. There's times, sure, it can be difficult and hard. But like I said, when you come to God, it's not going to be a bed of roses. No way, Jose. But I tell you, it's a life worth living. I'm so glad that I tried Jesus. I was 21 years old when I gave my heart to the Lord. Didn't know anything about Him. Wasn't raised in the church. Didn't know anything about the church. Didn't know anything about the Spirit of God. Didn't even know anything about the Bible. I told him Wednesday night, different ones wanted Bibles. And there's a... a a text that I put in each Bible that God blesses me to be able to give. And it said, sin will keep you from this book. And this book will keep you from sin. Sin will keep you from this book, the Bible. And this Bible will keep you from sin. It's true. I acquired my first Bible from Hoppin, the church bus. I go to the Baptist church. And me and my friends would hop that bus and they would take us and sometimes we wouldn't escape quick enough and they'd ring, ring us to come into the church. And an old woman, she sat there and prayed. There were things and she gave me my first Bible and she wrote that text in that Bible. And I still have that Bible. It's, it's packed somewhere because I've just kept it with things that I've kept through the years. And there was another lady that got on board on times that me and my friends didn't escape. We got to the church maybe at a different time or something. No, y'all need to come into the church because we were skipping off over to the mall to get a slice of pizza and hang out, do things that we ought not have been doing, and then we'd come back in time to get the church bus to take us back home. But there were times, and I'm not proud of that, but I'm just telling you. That was my exposure to church, but there were some good people. That woman gave me that Bible. Another woman was in the Sunday school and blessed be the Lord. She spent so much posted sending me We Miss You Sunday School postcards that I've ever seen in my life. And, and they actually sent me and my hoodlum friend, my best friend. We were trouble. We were just trouble. They sent us off to the church camp. Lord, they couldn't wait till the end of the week come. I think them counselors were doing everything they could just to keep us occupied. We caused havoc. We just, we just, we didn't want to be there. And I look back on it now and I'm so ashamed. Because somebody was trying to invest in me and I couldn't be bothered. But it's amazing how God will turn it around. And now I'm out here <laughs> with most of you that ain't don't want to be bothered. But there's somebody that's going to remember this girl. That's going to say she gave it. She gave me a Bible. She did this. She gave that message. She sang that song. She took time with me. She prayed with me. And I could have cared less at the time. But I thank God. There's always a reason. I don't have very many stories. I'm not one of those preachers. But when I say I know where you're at. I mean I know where you're at. In all different walks of life. And if I don't, one of my team members do. I guarantee you that. And I say that because I want you to have hope. I want you to check your dirt. Check that heart soil. Is the seed falling on good ground? Or do we need to go by and get that wayside? We get a little fertilizer, a little plant, some food in it. Maybe we got some stones in there that we need to get out. Maybe the thorns and the thistles of this life have just choked out every hope that you got. Maybe we just need to go through and weed it out. Clean it out. Get it ready. Get it prepared. 
And that's what me and the Harvest Street Ministry team is here to do. And not just us, but every ministry that is faithful coming back here. We love you. God loves you. Check your dirt.